as I felt myself slip away, slip away to another world, a world of sickness, a world of sadness, a world of pain. And as I lay there, hacking, sneezing, eyes are running, I thought to myself, self I thought, life is too short to be little. Well, what happened was that while Mark Knopfler was around Nashville, he met up with some really great players, one in particular whose name is Paul Franklin, who's a steel guitar player. And he's the guitar player that all the big stars in Nashville use on their sessions. Anyway, Mark Knopfler decides to record a new album that has a lot of country flavor in it, and he needs a lot of steel on it, so he asked Paul Franklin to play steel on the record. But no, 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 he doesn't just need him in sessions, he needs him on the road. So now Paul Franklin has joined Dire Straits for the next probably two years as they tour their latest album. And all the big stars in Nashville are screaming, darn you, darn you Dire Straits, we want Paul back, but he's taken. Mitsu, where didn't you get your outfit today? <laughs> In your wardrobe. <laughs> you don't Good remember? I know. Right, thank you very much. So we have something very special from you. Mitsu has done a wonderful brand new video from her album Tell des Hommes. And it was written by... Ivan Dorschak from Men Without Hats. It's my first English single and I'm very, very happy to present it to you. So what we have is a behind the scenes look at the making of a Mitsu video. Bob Dylan is one of the classic vocalists, and we're going to play a track from, oh, back in, I guess it must have been the late 60s, Subterranean Homesick Blues, also Tom Petty. We're also going to have a guy who is, um, well, he's Canadian, but according to Canada, he's not absolutely, totally Canadian. Uh, the CRTC is a, is a body right here in Canada, a governing body that defines what is Canadian as far as art goes and uh, broadcasting and Brian Adams apparently because he recorded the album half outside of the country and the songs were written half outside the country does not actually qualify as Canadian music interesting is it apparently it was a very very close one uh, the new kids on the block just skimmed by but they won again this week they're gonna take on extreme so don't forget Friday night stay tuned to much music we'll give you the phone numbers to call and you just call in and you choose your favorite band and perhaps we'll be able to dethrone new kids on the block. But anyway, they're winning when it comes to selling records and having the most intense fans. You're probably one of them watching this right now. Yep. Now, Paula Abdul, you know, she's kind of cute. She's in great shape. She's an ex-cheerleader. She has a couple of very amazingly selling albums. But she's also extremely bright and a good businesswoman. Did you know that she just started her own record label? It's called Captive Records, and MC Scat Cat is the first release. So we'll take a look at that video, and uh, you'll see her trying extra hard, because if it sells, she also scores big. But first of all, let's get serious on much. Well, in the case of shiny, happy people from R.E.M., it was actually taken from a movie. A lot of movies have been inspirations for videos, not surprisingly. And the movie that this video was inspired by is a 1948 film directed by Max Ophuls, and it's called Letters from an Unknown Woman. And there's a scene in this movie in which a couple go to a carnival and they sit down in this sort of pseudo frontier town ride and or sorry it's a tra frontier town train ride so they're sitting in the train and it seems to have scenery whipping around behind them through the window and then the camera pulls away and then you eventually see that it's an old man peddling what is the scenery that's going around in a circle and that's exactly what happens in this video so that's where that comes from it's, it's a planned thing that the new U2 album and the new Michael Jackson album are being released just before Christmas because they all want you to buy it up for your families, your grandmothers, your uncles, your cousins, your girlfriends, your boyfriends, buy their new records. But the marketing strategies are very different for those two albums in particular, pretty much one of the biggest rock and roll bands and then the biggest R&B soul guy, Hollywood guy also. Michael Jackson's record company, of course, did this whole huge kerfuffle for us to watch this new 11-minute long, super-duper, uh, mega-expensive, $4 million video. And uh, it was top secret. No one could hear it. And, um, and I'm talking critics. It was absolutely top secret. As a matter of fact, 
here at Much Music, we could not view the video before it actually went to air. They satellited it from Michael Jackson's headquarters to Much Music when it was broadcast live. So that's how top secret it was. And I remember when I was talking to a band called the Black Crows, who are, you know, party animals, definitely. I talked to them, and these guys were having a rough time with parents because somehow, because some of the guys in the band wore voodoo beads and they're known to light a few voodoo candles, they were considered to be terrifying voodooists and Satanists. So parents were protecting their children from these guys and terrified that they'd do evil things to their kids when actually they're just a bunch of rock and rollers who really like music. But then again, we were talking about it in the crew and we thought, you know, if this indeed did happen, that parents formed a circle and started burning their records, <laughs> it would have been great publicity for the band and then the kids would have to buy the records again so they get to sell a little more records. Michael Jackson is a recluse for the most part. He lives in this palatial estate with his pet animals, very few people, and his songs really aren't that emotional. They are more, I don't know if I should use the word generic, and they deal with the bigger issues like goodness. While Janet Jackson tends to live a more normal lifestyle. And when you look at her style, she's way hipper, she's in tune with what's on the street, or she allows people who are on the street to come and dress her, I'm not quite sure, though I think she's pretty hip. And her songs are a lot more gritty, street, sexy. And that's just because of the lifestyle that she's chosen to live. There is a new album out, and it's called Serious Hits Live. And it's Phil Collins' first ever live solo record. And it was taken from his Seriously Live tour of 1990, and it features about 15 songs. Seven of them went to number one, so that's quite a compilation right there. Plus a bunch of other songs from his four previous solo albums. And going along with it, if you want to pick that up too, is a home video. It runs about three hours long. It's about um, one of the best representations of Phil Collins because it's an uncut show. If you didn't catch him live in concert, or even if you did, and you want to remember those moments, you'll have it on videotape. Uh, I don't know where this show was actually... Sh mm, I don't know where that particular show was. Probably a compilation of a whole bunch of different performances that he's done around North America. I rented a movie called The Big Picture, and I don't remember who directed it, but this is the movie that... the film companies tried to ban because it was too true to life about the film industry. Uh, Martin Short played an agent and it was it was good. It was very good. Um, there was a seat. What it is is about this young student. I know it's boring, Tim. I'm sorry. Uh, does, here, have a seat, Tim. Here, have a seat. Here, have a seat. No, sure, just sit down there. All right. Anyway, so it's, anyway, it's about this student who, uh, a film student, who wins the best film award, so of course everybody wants him to direct the next big film, right? So they get him into the thing, but they start to change his idea, and that's supposed to be representative of the way the, the film industry actually works. Why am I sitting on my knees talking to you? Anyway, so, but what happens is he, he, loses, he loses his bid to make a film. So he d ends up directing this really cheesy, terrible video, and some famous producers see this really cheesy, terrible video and say, who is this guy? We need him back, and he gets to make a movie from one horrible, stupid, cheesy video, right? Get it? So anyway, this all is in keeping with Joel Goldberg, who directed a bunch of really cheesy videos for the Shuffle Demons, and then he did what? For, uh, what's his name? Maestro. For Maestro Fresh West, and they were, you know, at times cheesy, at times very good, and he's done a new one for Paul Lane, and you never know, some big film producer may be actually, let's stand up, some, some big film producer may actually be uh, watching this video that we're going to play for you and say, who is that guy? I gotta have him. So his name is Joel Goldberg and he wants to make a movie. This is Shuffle Demons. How much? So wrapping things up, we have a home video request all the way from Moonbeam, Ontario. I'm Eric and we'll see you next week on RSVP. Bye.